My name is Biff Whitfield here in Second Life and Andy Wheelock in Real World. Welcome to the Connected Hour. This is for Connected Educators Month and our topic for this evening is part of the special interest group of ISTE. And this is for virtual environments uh, and we're a group of educators that use a variety of virtual environments and gaming environments to help uh, both us connect as adults and uh, to use in our classrooms. Our first uh, person we're going to talk to really needs no introduction. Uh, Peggy Sheehy has been a, a real pioneer in, in all of this, and uh, Peggy is certainly someone who not only walks the walk but talks the talk. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first special presentation from Peggy Sheehy. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, everybody. I'm. Uh I'm going to say hello to you first from uh, World of Warcraft, where my avatar is standing on the steps of the auction house. And then, since our time is so limited tonight, I'm going to really try and stay focused and um, switch over to a couple of slides. So, thank you, Spit, for inviting me tonight. I am an instructional tech coordinator um, at Suffern Middle School in New York. And I'm Maggie Marat in Second Life and Marat Saad in World of Warcraft. So the background is, in 2006, my district established Round Paul Islands on the Teen Grid, which was the first middle school presence in Second Life. And while presenting my work with learning in Second Life at conferences, not only did I have to battle the virtual world hype, as initially the media did education a huge disservice by focusing on the, shall we say, darker, seedier sides of the virtual world, but I found, too, that I was often pressed to explain that Second Life was not a game, and explained to people the differences between a virtual world and a game. Those who only took a superficial look at Second Life often assumed it was a video game, and if virtual worlds weren't difficult enough to get across, video games were then considered by many to be the bane of an entire generation and certainly had no place in school. Therefore, it was a group of Second Life educators, though, who decided to go down yet another rabbit hole together and investigate these video games, um, specifically MMORPGs. Um, Catherine Parsons, who is now Catherine Adder, who is also Victoria Gloucester in Second Life, was the one who brought the group of us into World of Warcraft. And there we established the Cognitive Dissonance Educator Guild. We were chartered in December of 2007 as just a group of educators exploring the concepts of MMORPGs and their relationship to education. But it's grown to be a guild of hundreds of colleagues exploring the platform and experiencing the implications and applications to teaching and learning while having fun. We are a gaming guild, but we're functioning as a learning community and an extended professional learning network. Our membership is spread across the globe and across academic concentration, spanning K-12 through post-secondary education and drawing together a really wide range of educators in an affinity structure. Now, if you think about it, um, or if you remember from your mandatory ed psych courses, everyone, um, cognitive dissonance is also that uncomfortable feeling caused by holding two contradictory ideas simultaneously. And it became the name of our guild in honor of the conflict in thought between traditional learning structures and the emerging acceptance of technology and education. So learning to game together, learning about gaming together, and in general, learning from one another is all supported by the guild structure. Some of the members of Cogdis have a long history as gamers, while other members have never delved into the realm of gaming or of virtual worlds. Now, World of Warcraft, is complex. To master the game, one must master a significant amount of information and learn to navigate multiple interconnected systems. Um, our intention was to create a space where educators, many totally new to the gaming environment, could learn. Could learn in a non-threatening, supportive, and comfortable social dynamic. The Guild became a place that allowed adults to be learners with one another, where it was okay to make mistakes and ask questions. Um, veteran members of the guild would become mentors to the new players and experienced players who join the guild would share their knowledge and understanding of the game, teaching one another how to navigate the environment. As the guild has progressed, 
I'm proud to say it's really remained true to its origin, even, even as our membership grows and changes. Now, motivation of forming the Guild was not only to learn about gaming through the lens of better understanding the students that we teach, but also to understand itself, the engine behind the game, in order to understand the game theories and the educational possibilities within this context of play. Although World of Warcraft is just one of many games, it is rich with many possibilities to learn complex concepts, economics, social dynamics, problem solving, and very complicated probability mathematics are all inherent to the gameplay. And the backstory or the lore is as rich as any epic on the shelf. So the higher the level the player, the more deeply they must understand these concepts to progress further in the game. Gaming principles that directly corresponded to learning principles began to materialize right before us. How is learning structured in the game? How do you advance? What keeps you coming back to the pleasantly frustrating tasks? The Guild shares all of this and resources for learning, for books that we've come across, articles, journals, and personal experiences in order for everyone to better understand the role of games in education. Now, most recently, Cogdisk members have organized GAME, which is Gamers Advancing Meaningful Education. And GAME is a grassroots organization created to serve as the hub for all gaming educators as our community extends beyond World of Warcraft and explores other MMOs, as well as mobile games and MOOCs and many new emerging game genres. So the Cognitive Dissonance Educator Guild in World of Warcraft is the home base where this group plays online. But this intellectually curious network of educators all develop curriculum, offer online open courses, webinars, face-to-face -face presentations, um, and we're always sharing about the opportunities and the deeper learning that takes place in these games. You're going to hear tonight from a lot of the members um, who are responsible for things like WOW in School, the Edu Machina Festival, the Virtual Worlds and Games Un Symposium, the Games MOOC, and open courses on peer-to-peer -peer university. GAME, the organization, also started a webinar series last Thursday and will continue to produce our third Thursday GAME webinars. They'll be at 9 p.m. Eastern Time over the GAME's MOOC YouTube channel, so please join us. And um, you're going to be hearing more about this GAME's MOOC tonight, but I wanted to make sure to get that URL into you. And really, um, I guess what I basically want to say is we are educators who game. We want to learn how to game. We want to incorporate gaming strategies into our teaching and learning. And we, will, we really want you to join us in our quest to innovate teaching and to remember for yourselves the importance of play. All are welcome, novice, dabbler, or hardcore gamer. Come play with us. Level up your teaching and learning. We are more than just an affinity space in Cogdis. We're a guild. Thanks so much, Peggy. Um, as always, fascinating to hear uh, what you're up to. And we're going to move now to uh, our games MOOC person, and that would be uh, Kay at Front Range, and Kay Novak, who again needs no big introduction, but Kay has been doing just a lot of great things and has pushed the envelope of MOOCs. I'm going to have her tell you all about it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> welcome. Um, we really want to welcome the Connected Educator people, especially since the focus for Connected, uh, for connected Educators is Connected Communities Online. And here, everybody that you're going to be talking to tonight, we are online. <laughs> We've been a connected community. We've been, just been doing it a little differently. We, we, might, we might be a little more visual and maybe a little more graphic than, than some of the other people. So I guess where I want to start here is I want to start with um, talking about what is a MOOC. And um, to help me out today, I also have one of my fellow educators with me, who you will be seeing later, and that is um, Vasily G. Entis, and he'll be showing us some of the stuff that he's doing also. But let's get started. First of all, what is a MOOC? Okay, a MOOC is a massive online open course. And yes, the name has a tie back to games. 
So while a MOOC is a massive online open course, it's actually a play on words. And the play that it's on is an MMORPG. And that's a massively online role-playing game. So here at the Games MOOC, we're really celebrating this tie that we have in with games. So our ga at our Games MOOC, we are 285 people strong. And maybe the M shouldn't stand for massive. Maybe it should stand for moderate. But it's OK. We'll take that. Um, and the next letter of the MOOC, O for open. We are absolutely open. We are open, and we did our first iteration, and we will be doing a second games MOOC on October 8th. And in the in-between time, even though we say we're on hiatus, um, we seem to be um, posting and hosting events. So as far as the online, we are definitely online. In fact, what we have is a guild is a guild site, a game guild site. And that's where we're actually doing our course. So it's going to look a little different than the LMSs that you've been seeing. Now, the Games MOOC is officially sponsored by Colorado Community College. And we're using this site for our asynchronous stuff. So for our discussions, our video resources, and, and really for, for everybody who likes to do text, and everyone who likes to really um, read a lot and, and look at things like that. And for our real text reverts, we have, a we, we have a weekly tweet chat. So we have 60 minutes of a tweet chat every Wednesday evening. And we use the hashtag, hashtag GameMOOC. So it's hashtag G-A-M-E-M-O-O-C. And we currently said that we have 284 people. Well, when we went on hiatus about a week and a half ago, we only had 261. So we've been picking up people along the way. Um, as far as our site visits, we've had 38,494 of these. And we've had 73,679 page views. And we do gamification. Um, if you're looking at the screen right now, you'll see on the side we've had a number of awards. Awards for people um, like Artisan, Bard, Herald, um, Curator, and then we've had a couple of the other ones that are a little um, on the fringe. We've had an award for Cataclysmic, Evolutionary, and Fiero. So, when it comes to what we've been doing, we've been talking and building and designing, and we've also been doing a type of video known as machinima. And we've been doing it here in these virtual worlds, really trying to push the idea of a sandbox genre. We've been looking at augmented reality, alternate reality, games and simulations, and then different places where, where we can explore things. So when Peggy said, talked about being a guild of educators, we really try to enforce that. <laughs> and we really try to work together to get that kind of craftsmanship. Um, in fact, the people who've been involved with the Games MOOC have had over four years of experience of, of bringing educators into games and also to virtual worlds. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you um, what one of the other educators has been playing with. And we're going to cut over to um, Vasily, and we're going to show one of the areas he's been playing with. Because our open course really has been designed not just for, for what you saw first, which was um, a text-based guild site. We are really synchronous. It's about our educators coming into these virtual worlds, creating, building, having discussions, and doing events together, playing games, and really pushing the envelope. If you see what, if you see what Blue's doing, he's actually doing game design here. And we not only have our educators doing that, but we also have our students doing that. We really look at social network knowledge construction. So as connected educators, we're not looking at textbooks. We're not looking at official courses and grades. We're looking at how we learn from each other. And, and this is one of the ways we do it. 
old-fashioned guild style, old-fashioned artisan style. We get in there, we start building next to each other, and we start learning from each other. So very much guild, very much apprenticeship, very much mentor. Now, also with social network knowledge construction, we're also looking at that educators might want to look learn in different ways. Now, your first time seeing a screen and seeing the design that, that Vasily is doing right there, you just might want to lurk. And we're fine with lurking. We, we think that, that lurking is one step to learning. And then, and then we encourage our, our educators, when they want to, to move on past lurking to contributing, and then to creating, and then to leading, and even leading portions of our games MOOC. Now, we really learned how to do this when a group of us were working in some open courses over at P2P University. And the games MOOC and the work we're doing in open courses and open professional development was really de developed and facilitated by a couple of our educators, um, Chris Lukes, um, Vasily, Tanya Martin, Joseph Doan, Jerry Bucko, Stasha, Weston and Kat Flippin. Um, we've been doing this for a while and we've been bringing educators in here. And like we said, we don't care if they just come in to lurk, to see, and just kind of immerse themselves in the idea of it, or if, or if they want to come in and take a leadership role. We're, f we're fine with either of these. So that is really what we try to do here. What we try to do here is we try to give options that you can come in online and do synchronous. And when we say synchronous, we say full, full on immersion. Okay? You can just lurk or you can come and build or what you can do is you can come and play with us. Now, um, you can come and play with us starting on October 8th um, and that's running for six weeks or you can consider um, coming to our unsymposium, which is on November 2nd and 3rd. Now, the other area that we want to really show you is besides the building and the creating and the sandbox uh, genre, at the Games MOOC, we're also really looking at gameplay. And one of the areas that we look at gameplay is in World of Warcraft. And um, the picture we have up there is, is actually of a character by Chris Lukes, Figures B, and what this next games MOOC, we're going to be following along with one of his projects. And the project that he's doing, and he's waving at you, <laughs> and the project that he's actually doing is an, an intro to a business class where he is going to be doing with his students basically the Stormwind Chamber of Commerce, where they will be working in the auction house because World of Warcraft actually has an economy and he'll be working in the auction house to work with his students and to go over exactly how you do this kind of bidding and this kind of economy. So he's actually going to be using the game as a business simulation and his students also get to, <laughs> to learn about the gaming industry and also a five billion dollar industry that's already out there. So in the games MOOC, we're not just talking about games. We're having you come in and play the games, and we're having you collaborate with other educators to help kind of develop this kind of stuff. So the next one that, that we'll be going on to is we, we said we'd like to explore. Well, it's not just World of Warcraft. We like to explore other areas. And so we're going to be cutting back to Vasily so that he can give you a bit of an overview of another world or game that we're going to be looking at. The answers we now seek cannot be found in books. Hi guys, this is Vasily, or Blue Balk, or one of my other aliases throughout the different virtual worlds. Um, Terra is this new game that came out into the United States um, at, at the end of May of this year, and it was a, a high-running game in Korea, and it's crossed over to international borders. 
and it's this amazing game that allows you to do uh, it's just so it's this immense place where you can even though it's like wow you have your characters you have classes you have certain abilities um and you have quests that you want to take but there's uh this political side to it this um social political place where you have these things called vonox where they where people actual players in the game can apply to be and the people vote for who they want to be and what vonox do is they allow for um certain quests to open up and they open up different stores and it's for this political campaign you have to be this guild leader you have to have some amount of people in your guild and it's not like some popularity contest but it's there's this campaign to it because you can send messages in here you can send posters up on the terror site where people look at them and they can see where you're standing like depending on who you're voting for they will open up certain quests and it actually affects the world of terror for everybody um, and that crosses solvos and this happens every month so at the beginning of the month you apply to be one then the voting process and then you get elected and you have control over parts of the game and it's um, very exciting so thanks <laughs> Still exploring okay. this place. Yeah, uh, the, the thing about it is, yeah, what really intrigued me about this, and 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 so you know, for the games MOOC, we do go into these different games, and we have these discussions. It just seemed like for this one, it might be a possibility of bringing in um, some poli sci students or some social studies students to do to do a quick study of of how you do a political campaign and what the implications of, of actually winning are. So it's, it seems like this one is one, at least in the game smooth, that I have a feeling um, we will be putting it up in the discussion forums. We will be running in and taking a look at it. We'll be taking lots of screenshots and writing about it, discussing it, and playing it. Because this opportunity for a political system um, seems to be something that we might not necessarily have in, in some other games and, and might give us an intriguing view. So this is to go ahead and wrap up what we're talking about here at the Games MOOC. And um, to wrap it up, well, to let you know that we'll be starting back up again on October 8th. And that every Wednesday at 6 p.m., while well, we have Second Life time there, that means 7 p.m. Eastern time, we do a Game MOOC tweet chat. And if you'd like to come to our website, we're on Shifter under Games MOOC. So, thank you very much. Great, Kay. Thanks to Kay and Vasily. You guys are doing great work. Uh, really fantastic stuff. Uh, we're going to move on now to uh, Marie Booz or Mandy Mimulus in Second Life, and she's going to highlight uh, Visti Island, uh, Virginia Society of Technology and Education, and shows all the great stuff that's been going on there for quite a few years. So, uh, Mandy, take it away. Hello, I'm Mandy, and welcome to Visti Island, the Virginia Society in Education's home in Second Life. In real life, I am an instructional technology coordinator for a large district in Virginia Beach, actually in Virginia Beach. And I have to tell you, my real life job is very exciting. Last week, I welcomed back the computer resource specialists. This week, I'm welcoming, welcoming new teachers to my school division. And next week, I get to welcome back our library media specialists, all the while in advocating for integrating new technologies into their teaching and learning. I also am a volunteer here to facilitate the activities that go on here in VISTI Island. And I need to tell you that VISTI supports its membership through professional development opportunities, which include real-life um, conferences and mini-conferences, 
Uh, we have ongoing events such as webinars and podcasts. And most importantly, VISTI is an advocate for the role of technology and, and what it plays in our schools today. I'm standing here right now next to our Jamestown settlement, which is uh, a virtual bill that uh, several Virginia Beach teachers put together here on VISTI Island. And I'm also on a bicycle, so I'm going to let you kind of tool around with me as I, as I tour VISTI Island. As you can see, I'm now in front of our English ships. And it's a very interactive build that we have created, so you can actually click on things and find information. And it was created by passionate volunteers who recognize the potential of using a virtual environment, environment as a venue for professional learning. And I should tell you that VISTI has had a presence in Second Life since 2006. And about three years after that, they, they actually created this island. And we came online. and. Believe it or not, we're going to celebrate our fourth birthday in January of 2013. Uh, a remarkable milestone for VISTI and Second Life is that we have been providing our membership with program content every Monday night since November of 2008. So for the past four years, we have had a weekly meeting here on this island. And each week, one of our four main programs has been presented and our program strands are we have guest speakers we have tours of educational sims here in Second Life uh, we have make and take building workshops and we have networking events and I have to tell you our networking events are the most fun and they kind of run the full gambit uh, for example the VISTI facilitators have host, hosted open mic nights where people just come in and we talk about different things. We've had mobile technology user group meetings. We've held dances, uh, fashion shows. We're actually kind of known for our fashion shows. I don't know how that came to be, but we are. Uh, we host field day events and game nights, scavenger hunts, share fairs, and book discussions. And actually our book discussions have drawn a lot of interest. Each, each summer we have held a different book discussion and our very first book discussion was centered on uh, understanding design by design by Grant Wiggins and Jay Matai. And then uh, the next year we decided to try another book discussion and we actually used a historical fiction book called Blood on the River, Jamestown, 1607 by Elise Carbone. And this is a historical fiction novel for fourth and fifth grade uh, readers. And we, of course, chose this novel because it was a great introduction to our historical The James Fort, which is behind me here on the screen. Um, and then our Eastern Woodland Indian Village, which is a little further back, and I will take you to. But here we act. Visti Island and she spoke about how she conducted her research for the novel. We later produced a machinima, a Pocahontas leading a tour of our build and interacting with Virginia fourth grade students by asking them questions reviewing our Virginia standards of learning. And we actually followed the novel, the events in the novel and how it related to real life history. The following year, we had two fourth grade classes, one here in Virginia Beach and one in Onrico County, reading the novel, the novel <clears throat> Blood on the River, collaboratively. And the teacher in Onrico County decided that she really wanted to come here to Visti Island. So we, we locked down the island, and the teacher came here. 
with her avatar, um, and we had Pocahontas here, and we walked around the historical build, reliving the events from the novel as the students watched and interacted with Pocahontas in real time. And I'm just going to turn my bike around here, so maybe, maybe not. And Elise actually talked to us about how they're doing the archaeological dig at real life Jamestown. So we put in a well, which revealed a lot of artifacts at the actual dig, and allows students to actually come in and click on uh, interactive artifacts so that they could um, see the real life artifact and actually relate it to parts in the novel. Our third book discussion happened last summer and we actually read the book Can We Skip Lunch and Keep Writing by Julie Ramsey and Julie met with us each week here on Visti Island and held informal conversations about the importance of student collaboration and the experience that, lead to her, that led to her writing this book. And then this summer we held our fourth book talk uh, which just concluded last evening and we discussed the book Reality is Broken, Why Games Make Us Better and How We Can Change the World by game designer Jane McGonigal. Our VISTI direct participated the four panel discussions on how to apply the elements of gaming to make learning engaging, relevant and to help make world world real world challenges for our students. What made this book discussion unique for teachers, especially in my school division, is that this was the first time we actually offered professional learning credits for attending the book discussions here in Second Life. And when you, you think about using a virtual world for professional learning, that's a huge thing that you can offer credits to teachers for taking their professional development in a um, virtual world. Not only did they participate in the discussions here on Visti Island, but they also posted reflections to questions and comments on our Visti Ning. We had about 25 teachers who registered for the series and we supplied them with a copy of the book and, an, and they also got an orientation to creating their avatar and using Second Life. This past fall here on Visti Island, uh, we held our first first virtual classroom for the Center uh, for Teaching Excellence at UVA WISE. It was an undergraduate course for pre-service teachers and it was entitled The 21st Century Instructor Transforming Education Through Technology. And our course participants explored five key trends for technology's role in education through interactive presentations from experts in the field here on Visti Island and they held virtual field trips that kind of led them through um, many different virtual environments. And then they worked collaborati collaboratively with peers here in Second Life. We actually even provided them with their own sort of dorm rooms. Well, the course was such a big hit that we offered it again here on Visti Island through UVA WISE this past spring. So we've actually offered this course twice and hoping we can offer it again. As you can imagine, um, we're sort of always busy here on VISTI. Uh, we're, we're actually getting ready for our real life conference and putting together some uh, playground events that will become part of our digital sandbox at our real life conference that will be held here in Virginia Beach in December. Uh, our facilitators work hard to put together um, events for teachers to come and to explore virtual worlds for professional learning. And we understand that things in Second Life are not always constant and here on Visti Island we're constantly adding new builds. So even though we put together our Jamestown Fort and our Powhatan Indian Village, we have also put together several other historic 
and geological features from Virginia. So I'm just going to kind of take you on a whirlwind tour. <laughs> I'm going to come walking by here on our Powhatan Indian Reservation. And we're going to wave to thunder. And I'm going to head on to our build of Natural Bridge, which is a geolo geological fo formation that is found in Western Virginia. Again, it's an interactive. It also uh, serves a double purpose of, ho of a place where we can host meetings. I'm now in a recreation of the first African Americans who settled here in Jamestown. going to cross the James River over to the main part of our island. Where we host our real life meetings every Monday night uh, 5, 5 p.m. second life time. We also have space available for other educators to come and host meetings. We've had several colleges and universities who have used our space to host meetings and actually meet with pre-service um, student teachers. Once you are a VISTI member, your rights include building here on the island, and this is our, our sandbox where we hold some of our building classes. We have a teacher resource center, a community bend building for um, fun events such as dancing, but underneath the community building, we've actually built a recreation caverns, which is in Shenandoah. Virginia. Again, VISTI recognizes the potential of using Second Life as a platform for providing professional development for teachers not only here in Virginia for, but for all of our members, our real life members worldwide. And we welcome people to actually go to VISTE at www.vste.org and sign up. Membership is always free at VISTE, both in real life and second life. And the benefits you receive are quite numerous. And then once you are a member, you can actually join our Ning and participate in many of our sort of special interest groups that are hosted on our Ning. So with that, I'm going to, I think I'm turning it back over to Spiff. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mandy. Great job. Keep up the good work. Okay. Uh, our next tour is going to go to Lauren McCallan uh, of SLEEC, and I'll let her introduce those initials for you, but again, this is another professional development area that's been uh, been going gangbusters for the last few years, so I'll let uh, Lauren take it away and tell you all the great stuff that's been going on. Well, we would like to welcome you to Sleek Island, a virtual home of the Second Life Educators of Escambia County Group. That's where we came with, up with the Sleek. Our real-life home is um, Escambia County School District, a K-12 district located in the Western Panhandle, Florida, um, our district headquarters in Pensacola. I am Lauren Thurman, Laura McKellen in Second Life, 
and this is Lori Weedo, Lori Galley in Second Life. Uh, we are instructional technology teachers for Escambia County School District. Our virtual campus is a closed estate, but it's accessed by open group membership. So uh, we have this landing point where educators can land, and also behind us here, I'm going to walk through, we have a um, we have a little orientation area where non-members can use. We built it realizing that many of our teachers possibly would not leave our district island, and so we wanted a way for them to learn how to use this environment independently. Once um, someone decides to join the group, then they'll have full access to the island, and we hope that people will join it so we can connect globally with educators from other districts. Um, up here in the middle of the island, we have our headquarters where there are many resources for new avatars. And we also keep a calendar um, of events from the many different educational groups in Second Life. And um, we list the things that we have as well as broadcast them out through uh, notices to the different groups because we like to, um, we like to collaborate and connect with the other educators. Um, our island originally was designed for professional development. We have a lot of small learning groups in our district. We support uh, technology-infused project-based learning groups, and they meet virtually here on the island. The, we have groups this year, um, the past two years really, that have connected from the different schools. We have more than 40 schools in our district, and they are connecting by grade level. Let me see if I can navigate this bridge. Um, they connect by grade level. So, for instance, here a third grade technology learning group that is focusing on project-based learning uh, meets here twice a month. They meet three times per year face-to-face -face for a day-long professional development. And then they meet every other week here as they plan and develop and implement, implement and then assess standard-based projects for their students. Um, and we, our hopes that it eventually some of these projects will be done at our student island that I'll tell you about later that is here in Second Life. Um, through the years, we've identified areas of need for a professional development, and then we offer those sessions, sometimes after school. Um, more often, it tends to be in the evening hours. We're not able to offer a stipend, but we do offer in-service uh, points to our teachers. We have to have some follow-up, and then they're awarded their um, professional development points. Um, We've had lots of different topics. You can see we um, spent some time on Glogster, on VoiceThread. We've done um, a, a lengthy workshop on project-based learning since we're really trying to implement that across the district. Um, we did, a, a year ago, we did a series on the iDevices using iPods and iPads with students in the, in the classroom. Um, and last, last fall we did, or last winter we did, a series on um, digital citizenship and um, there's several different things that we're working on planning to, for this fall uh, to implement. We just came back to school this week and um, so we'll be working on that and as soon as we have that schedule up it'll, you'll see it on the calendar and we'll send out notices. I'm going to teleport across the river here to um, a 3D build of the matrix in Florida Oops, let me turn around here. In Florida, we have a technology integration matrix, as um, I'm sure most states do. And um, it is a, a tool that combines the levels of technology integration with the characteristics of the classroom. And so we have made, a, a, when, on the web, when you, teachers take a look at it, there are videos of what that level of technology integration looks like in the classroom. And so we've built a 3D model here where we are, as we find projects that fit um, at that level that are being, that are good examples of what's being done in our district, then we are posting them here. So kind of a virtual gallery of, of student projects that are going on in the district. Um, I'm going to teleport one more place over here real quick. Our main um, meeting area is the band shell. Some of you may have been here, and um, 
every year. Um, sometimes we meet here for the larger meetings, but every year our district does a conference in real life called um, the Innovative Teaching and Technology Summit. And so simultaneously at the same time, we have a, vir a VITS, virtual um, in the, in technology conference, and we have a playground there in the real life conference and try to, um, to immerse some of our teachers into what is being done in these worlds. And um, it's a great example when they're, they're watching, a great example is some of you have come and participated in it and people have come and shared other educators what they are doing in virtual worlds. So it's great for our teachers to see what other districts are doing um, as well as what we are trying to do. Our next one, we generally do it in the spring, our next conference will not be until April. So I'm going to go ahead and teleport way up above the sky to a classroom that we have. This summer, during our summer break, we held a mini course and it was entitled Teaching and Learning in Virtual Environments. And it was for teachers that are interested in learning to design the framework for student projects at Tech Island. Tech Island, which stands for Teens of Escambia County, is our private estate student island here in Second Life. Um, and we had several teachers last year that did some beginning projects with students. And we were offering, we offered this course during the summer and we'll be offering it again in summer, encouraging um, teachers who would like to do a project um, using the project-based learning model in a virtual environment with their students. We're also excited to share that we will soon acquire a virtual campus on Dreamland Metaverse. Um, and this opportunity will be, now be available for teachers of students under the age of 13. So um, you can see here, we've kind of left just all the, the different builds and all the different learning tools that teachers have created uh, that they worked on during the summer. And um, we want to keep in touch with what's, if you want to keep in touch with what's happening with our group, we encourage you to join the Second Life Educators of Escambia County in Second Life, or you can follow us on our sleek.edgeblogs.org. And um, if you are interested in using the space here on this island, there are many times when um, in these spaces when it's not being used, and we would be glad to, um, to set that up with you. Just drop us a note card or contact us via the, our addresses that are posted on the Edge blog. And um, I'm going to hand it back over to you, Spiff. Thanks so much, Lauren. I'm going to move on now to one of my all-time favorite uh, spaces. Of course, that was play uh, a very happy part of. And we are going to head on over to the Virtual Pioneers headquarters with Mary O'Brien, a.k.a. Serena, of course, and learn all about the historical offerings from this uh, fantastic group. Take it away, Mary. Thank you, Spiff. Um, I'm over here at the Virtual Pioneer headquarters, and I have my avatar nicely dressed up as Amelia Earhart because I feel that Amelia is a true... I'm just trying to get my uh, screen up there. There you go. Here I am. My um, avatar is dressed as Amelia Earhart because Amelia is a true pioneer. And I would also like to put in that category Spiff because he's a true pioneer. He started the Virtual Pioneers back in the summer of 2008 as a group of educators from New York who wanted to explore and learn about history and cultures in Second Life. And um, his group that he started, the Virtual Pioneers, has grown to over 500 members. So it's a very popular group. It meets every other Sunday at, um, we're just actually changing the time to 5.30 Second Life time. I'm trying to go a little bit later to get some of our West Coast friends online. And we, every other Sunday we have a tour or a presentation or some sort of learning opportunity. And then on the other Sundays, Spiff holds what he calls a meet and greet. 
and he just is here to talk to people about educational things that are happening. It's a little more informal and it's just a chance to come and hang around. So I'd like to show you around our campus a little bit. Um, this land is on Edu Island and um, it actually is donated to us because we are volunteers for Edu Island. And this is our beautiful building that was also donated to us by one of our members. You can see it kind of keeps in the historical genre. And if you come inside with me, this is our little meeting area where we start all our meetings. If you're interested in joining Second Life, we have a little board here that you can click and join and also visit our website. Over here we have a suggestion box. We um, love to hear suggestions from people. And here's our little outline of SPIF welcoming people to the virtual pioneers. Looking spiffy. The Virtual Pioneers is a free organization, but we do take donations that help mostly to pay for our parties. <laughs> so we've had some great parties. Um, you can see the last donation was 10 Lindens. So it's great to have donations of all sizes. Up here we are proudly displaying our awards um, that we won at the Virtual World conference. What an honor to have two awards. And if you come up these stairs, there's a little um, wall here that highlights some of the tours that we've gone on this year. Sorry about that, a little lag. So these are some of our past tours. Um, we have been to Peru. We had a demonstration by the Flying Tigers. We went to um, Georgetown, Colorado, a wonderful uh, role play sim of northern Colorado. It, the exciting part was that we were on a train ride and um, outlaws came. So that was very exciting. We've been to some beautiful um, Sims of Italy and Greece, Afghanistan. Uh, Cyrus often does a tours for us to um, some of his favorite Sims. Here we were in Dublin, which was really beautiful. And um, this is a Sim that belongs to one of our members, Twelfth Night of the Dominican, where we met some real life pirates, which was very exciting. All of these are landmark givers, so if people miss the tour, they can come and grab a landmark and go and visit. On the other side of the building, which I'm trying to walk. <laughs> oh, boy. When all else fails, I'll just cam over, right? Okay, on the other side of the building. I stood still too long, Mandy, and now I can't even walk. We have some great um, free historical clothing that was all donated by designers. And in fact, I just am contacting a new designer to get some new clothing. You can kind of peek at it through the walls. I just am so laggy I can't show it to you. I'm sorry about that, but we have some beautiful clothing. And one of the things that's really fun about being a virtual pioneer is we often go on our tours in costume. So we have a great time dressing up and um, going in costume. I always tease Spiff about wearing um, tights because he likes to go as a knight. And I'm sorry, my computer is frozen. I can't get over there to show you the clothing, but. Um, they are all free and all donated by designers, so please stop by. And please try to come to our meetings. Our next meeting is this coming Sunday, and it's actually a little bit different. It's a um, 
lecture by a prof uh, not a professor but an instructor from Builders Brewery about taking photographs in Second Life. One of the things that people really like to do at Virtual Pioneer Tours is take photographs of these beautiful sims. So we're going to learn some tips about photographs. So thanks so much everybody and thank you Spiff for starting this great group and for letting me be part of it. It's been a great opportunity for me to grow professionally. And with that, I'm going to sign off and back to Smith. Thanks so much, Serena. Uh, Spiff back here again, and uh, really going to kind of wrap things up. And it's a perfect place, I think, to do our wrap up to the place where I think many of us all began. And that is here at. Uh, what we call now ISTE Sigby uh, space. Uh, we started off as ISTE Island, which had a, a lot of space, but we're now to, to um, uh, this lands here on Edu Island 9, which is a wonderful space, and we're really grateful to, to have it. It's uh, While it's a little smaller, it really gives us a more comfortable feel and really brings all our events uh, to life. You can see uh, we've got some beautiful landscaping here. If you want to just take a look out there, and this was all designed by Serena and TechPlex Engineer, uh, who are our builders here. We've got a wonderful space and building. I'm just going to kind of zoom around here. We've got uh, Adirondack chairs galore. And let me just give you a brief tour. Uh, over here is where we have uh, just informal uh, kind of our fireside chat sessions, uh, campground areas here. And we have uh, what we call the Sigby Grand Puba office hours here, and uh, anyone can stop on by and chit chat about the uh, educational issues of the day. And uh, we have a really good time and just have some good old uh, fashioned professional conversation and, and some fun as well. Um, over here, we've got uh, uh, our journal that was. Uh, our editors, Rosie and Bob Wojtek, and also our Grand Poobah this year, our really high Grand Poobah. It's Bob, and they've been working on this virtual education journal that has been highlighting a lot of what we do here and beyond in the virtual environments, uh, specifically for educators. So it's a really great uh, uh, magazine, and it's available online and free. And uh, we look for uh, both writers and uh, people to read it. So. As I walk through here, we've got, uh, this is our uh, docent area, so for those people that uh, want to come here and just hang out and help people who stop by Second Life, which we do, and you can notice we've got a beautiful sunset coming along the way there. And just along here, this is our uh, Sigby Speaker Series area, and every third Tuesday of every month, except for August, and of course we're doing a Connected Educator Month. Uh, today, but uh, we have guest speakers, and you can find all those guest speakers on our Weebly site, which is uh, simply uh, sigvi.weebly.com, and that'll give you our uh, Sigvi speaker series uh, latest events and speakers. And our our first speaker coming up is going to be Chris Didi from Harvard University, who's one of the uh, kind of leading pioneers of the virtual environment uh, and education movement. Um, over here, we've got uh, we've got someone hanging out over here, and this is kind of our opinionator, so you can actually get uh, people's opinions on uh, topics. So it's kind of a survey area. Just briefly, I'll show you the top of our building here. So you can see we've got a library where we can have some informal chats. You notice this little square table. Uh, the more people that sit there, the more chairs appear, so you can have some pretty nice kind of avatar face-to-face -face conversations. Over here we have a more comfortable space with some couches that people can come and uh, can sit and chat and talk about the educational uh, events of the day. And you'll notice we've got some in the distance there. Let's just come to our island and just take a look around and we always highly encourage that. Uh, I'm going to walk over here and show you um, what are called the, uh, we've got a virtual environments hut, and both of these huts were designed by a good friend and, and one of the original leaders, uh, Scott Merrick. 
so he designed these and, and if you want to learn more about different virtual environments you can just come on into the virtual environments hut take a look around click on some of these uh, signs and you can find out about some other venue over here we have uh, the bloggers hut again this is uh, one of Scott's favorite things to do and you can come and vote for your favorite blog you can take a look at a blog and you simply click on the green dot there and uh, you vote for your favorite blog I mean, uh, it's a month and let me just uh, you know, pop over here real quick over next to us is uh, not part of Sigby land but we kind of consider it Sigby land is no clue kid a good friend Mary Nostrum this is her island and we use this for uh, machinima uh, events and yeah, machinima for that familiar is kind of movie making a little camper this is kind of a 50s drive-in scene that we had our machinima fest at ISTE 2012 so people could come watch movies here in this fun environment we also had people in San Diego California at the ISTE um, conference so that's uh, a wonderful area and uh, no clue has been doing some really great machinima work and it's been really kind of a pioneer for us. Head on over to our diner. Or actually, over here we've got uh, a display by uh, Cyrus. Hush, who's done uh, an awesome job of creating kind of um, um, a teleport area where you can go to all different kind of educational SAMs. Cyrus has been uh, really awesome at keeping track of these things. And if you're ever looking for a good place to go, Cyrus Hush is the person to talk to, and if not, if you can't talk to him, just come on over here to this board, and if you click on it, it take you to a different area. And again, all of these are uh, education related. We're gonna head on over here to the dining area. And it looks like we've got a lovely little group here. Look at all these folks; they're uh, probably watching this event on the screen. We've got Serena, we've got uh, Blue Parker, who is one of the designers of this diner. He is the designer of this diner. It's, and so uh, this is kind of a nice little, again, 50s themed diner that we have. Uh, meetings, chit chats. Uh, when we were at ISTE 2012 in San Diego, we were kind of used streaming uh, to the TV behind the counter so that uh, the people that couldn't make it to San Diego could come here and watch the. Uh, the CD playground events and presentations right here. It was really uh, a comfy little place to get some free um, conference time. Here. So this is this provides um, what I think you're seeing with all these environments and something that uh, I believe Philip Rosedale talked about, uh, who was the creator of uh, Linden Labs and, and originator of Second Life, is this idea of creating a new environment in a new space and I think that's what uh, we enjoy as educators um, to come to a new type of space like this diner just to change up the pace to get um, you know to connect with people and chat it really kind of gives you a new perspective a new view it makes you I think that's what we as connected educators do here I think we uh, connect in a very unique way and yeah, we're not afraid to have a little fun to have some pink hair, uh, change up clothes, dress in a historical costume. And we found, I think, it's uh, really just some good, clean fun. And it's a great way to connect. And I think all of us here, and the people in the diner and the people that were on the panel this evening, I think can say a special thank you to uh, Isti and for bringing us together uh, from the start of Isti Island to our space here. I think we've, um, we've gone in a lot of different directions but continue to stay here at Isti Sigby and uh, have meetings and connect and find out what everybody's doing. And if there's any group that I would say uh, I'm connected to, this is it. And I've learned so much from all of the people that uh, are here tonight and the people that are part of ISTE's Second Life presence in Sigby. And uh, so I think we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up there. But I do want to just say some special thanks certainly to all the presenters. Uh, Chris uh, it has been fantastic. Uh, Abbas, Abacus Capellini, I like the way that name rolls off. Uh, he's been great at uh, setting up our video feed for this evening. 
and has just been doing some wonderful stuff. Key Novak, uh, again, Grit Jumper, Serena, Mandy, um, and Peggy, uh, Blue Barker. You guys are just doing great stuff, and uh, these are the people that inspire me. I know I've probably forgotten somebody, but um, I, uh, I'm grateful to have this uh, connection with these group of people. So sigby.weebly.com where you'll find the calendar of events for all of the different options from MOOCs to presentations. Uh, please join us at those um, that website and beyond. And we look forward to seeing you. Please feel free to contact us and come join us in Second Life or beyond. Thanks everyone. Have a great evening. It was wonderful to be here with you.